see you lose confidence. At forward, a 6'3 junior, number 12, Anthony Cotton. And at forward, a 6'4 sophomore, number 24, Jackson Monroe. And now the start lineup for your center lineups. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore, number zero, Dave Cups. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore, number four, Emmanuel Dan. At guard, a 6'5 junior, number 12, Tom House. At forward, a 6'7 junior, number 13, Rich Wolf. And at forward, a 6'7 senior, number 22, Trey Johnson. We also are coached by Brooke Pops. The Vikings are coached by Tim Fries. All right, here we go. Just about ready to tip off our MVCC Varsity Game of the Week as the 8 and 2 Centerville Oaks are set to host the 11 and 4 Miamisburg Vikings. Jared Bergstrom, Lucas Smith with the call. You're going to have Jackson McGowan going up against Trey Johnson of the Elks for the opening tip. Players to watch out for for Miamisburg. You're going to have to keep an eye on number one, Evan Otterson. He hit a game winning three at the buzzer to beat the Elks three weeks ago at Miamisburg, 52 51. As Seneva wins the opening tip and Cups brings the ball up the court. He's going to drive in. Kicks it out to Rolf. Rolf and House are going to be the other two big keys to the game tonight for Centerville. Both of them coming in averaging almost 23 points a game between the two. And Gabe Cups is going to start Centerville off with a nice drive and finish. Otterson double team kicks it up court to McGowan. Or that was Kopik, sorry. Back to McCopic. Otterson out to Logan. Kopik's going to shoot a three. Oh, hits was, the side of the backboard. And that looked like Paul George in the playoffs. Ooh. It almost looked like a carry right there. The foul's going to be called in Miamisburg. Foul's on Kopik, his first, team's first. Hopefully Paul George doesn't hear you call him out like that. I mean, he's, he's kicking, he's doing really good. Start off this new year. Johnson over to Cups in the corner. Takes the screen from How Rolf. Back to Cups. Cups is gonna set up a play. Gonna get a screen. Cups had Johnson on a back door, but Cups pulls up and shoots it. Has both buckets for the Elks here early. And a 4 nothing lead for Centerville. And that's one thing you're going to have to look out for for Cups is his pull-up jumper. And now he's playing some good defense against Otterson. And now Logan passes it. Kopik now over to Copsey. Back out to Otterson. Or that was, uh, yeah, that's was Otterson. Logan back over. Otterson's going to drive baseline. Nice Down pass. low to Kopik. What a pass to Kopik and off the glass. And he went around Trey Johnson with the put up. It's a good way to set your offense off with good, some good ball movement, some nice cutting it in. Cops is going to try to set on. Screen from Johnson. And Johnson again had a wide open back door. Oh, three, three up and no good by Rolf. He's going to be rebounded by Copsey. And now Otterson's going to bring the ball up. Cut by Jang. Rolf comes no. into the game Topics. shooting. It's gonna, oh, a tad pass. 38%. Turnover for Miamisburg. And turnovers are killers, and you can't give the ball right back to Centerville. Now Cups is going to bring the ball up. Johnson gives it back to Cups. Cups going to drive into the paint, pulls up from the free throw line, and misses that shot. Cups had a nice hezzy right there. And now Logan's going to drive. Hook. Turn around shot, and we're tied at four with 5.15 left in the first quarter. It was a good hook there by Logan, freeing himself up, giving himself some space, and knocking down the shot. 
Kicks it over to Trey Johnson, back to House. Cops was thinking of the three. He's gonna take it back. It's gonna be guarded Cups by Austin. trying to drive on Logan. Pull up from three, and it's three. Roll That one doesn't even move the net. House comes into the game. He shoots 36 from behind the arc. In the last meeting between the school, these two house had 16. And there's another turnover by Mommiesburg as Otterson and and uh, McCohen could not connect there on the pass. And now they're going to take Centerville's going to take Trey Johnson out of the game and substitute in Rich Rolf. Now we got Gabe Cubs bringing the ball up, and he's going to be Centerville's primary ball handler. He's going to come off a screen. So another also brought in Jason Hayes, too. His older brother, Jackson Hayes, was a big run as that one's up and off the glass for Ryan Kiefer. His brother, Jackson Hayes, was a big run for the Elks when they went to three straight district championships. I thought Jackson Hayes played for Center Moeller. Trapped him in the corner. I thought Jackson Hayes played for uh, Moeller. That's different Jackson Hayes. There oh. was two. Oh, there's two of them, okay. I was about to say. What Another a backdoor back feed. By Up off the glass. Oh, and then it's gonna be an and, and gonna one. Call it the and one, a block. And coming after, coming off two turnovers by Amesburg, that and one could spark some offense. I mean, some spark some energy into this offense. As Otterson goes a line for one to make this a two point game if he connects. Free throw is up and no good, but an offensive rebound for McGowan. And, gonna, and it was blocked out of bound by Hayes. And it's gonna stay Miamisburg's ball as it looks like Otterson's gonna be the one to inbound it. And look for Miamisburg to roll off a screen on the three-point line or cut into the basket. And, and it's gonna Cups be intercepted by Cup. Miamisburg's fourth turnover. And that one's blocked out of bounds, but did they call the foul? It looks like it was pinned against the, on the glass. They're going to call it on Jackson McGowan. Cups out there look like an NFL Pro Bowler making an interception with one hand. And now House is going to go to the line for two. He's going to miss the first. So Centerville's lead is going to stay at three. And Centerville's going to take out Gabe Cups in return That's a for rare Kyle Kenny. Miss for House. Comes in 93.8% from the free throw line. Wow. But he won't miss this one, and he's going to give center no, four points. No, lane violation against House. Oh. And it's, and he waves it off. So now the lead's going to stay at three. I don't Miamisburg. know, do they count that as a miss in the free, in the book, or? Uh, I think it's just a turnover. Yeah, I think, yeah, just a turnover. So now Miamisburg has to get something going. Get a three here. Cop, or McGowan down low to Otterson. Step back jumpers up, no good. Uh, Miami's very rebound by get their transition Rolf. defense. And House is gonna dribble around, go inside, and the ball it looks stripped away. But fight for possession. It's gonna be a jump ball in Miamisburg's favor, so the ball is gonna be taken back to the Vikings. Well, it's gonna be inbounded to Cooper. Back out to Copsey. And the ball's gonna be turned over again. And it's gonna call a, a foul. It's gonna be number it's gonna be on number twelve, Kopik. That's gonna be his second, team's third, as Cups returns back into action here for the Elks. And the ball is gonna be ended inbounded by Kenny to Cups as Cups brings the ball up the court. To try to extend this lead. Cups has had four out of the nine Elks points so far. Let's see if he can get some more. Rolf Cups passes to Cups. By Cups, eh? Cups back to Kenny. Kiefer drives, kicks it back out to Kenny. Cub, nice, nice teardrop floater that drops. And Cups has six points early in this first quarter with two minutes and 30 seconds left. Miamisburg's going to have to stop him if they want to get back in this game as Cups has six of the 11 points and another turnover, almost turnover. 
The ball's gonna stay with Miamisburg. I gonna say Johnson and Dang check back into the game for Kiefer and Rich Rolf for the Elks. Miamisburg down five, 11 to six with 2.25 left in the first quarter. Boardwine gets the inbound pass. And like you were saying before the game, it just, Miamisburg doesn't seem like they have a lot of height on their team. Whereas Centerville, they, they have some two good options with Johnson and Rolf. And Boardwine's gonna drive in with a little teardrop and that's gonna be blocked with offensive McGowan. rebound. He's gonna get fouled and McGowan's gonna go to the line for two. Try to make this a three point game. Foul was on Jason Hayes. He's going to connect on the first. We'll go and makes the first. He comes in shooting 50% from the free throw line, but makes both of them there. Now Centerville's only going to be led by three. And now the refs first are, points of the game. Refs are having a little discussion, maybe over a lane violation or something, but it looks like the basket's going to stay. And the lead's going to be cut down to three. Stop play. Now here comes Cups dribbling up court again, leading his offense down the court. Kick over to Hayes. Hayes going to drive in, kicks it back out. Looked like he might have stepped on the base or backcourt line. Three Kenny's. up and no good. That was by Kenny. And Miami's here is going to retain possession as the ball is being brought up by Cooper. And he's going to be double teamed. And luckily, he, oh man, they had, a, they had a good opportunity right there as McComb was driving in. Nobody was around him. Now Miami's going to kind of go to the top of key and start passing the ball around and see if anything opens up. Cooper is being tightly guarded by Dang. And five second called against Cooper. You saw when Johnson and McGowan were standing down there next to each other. Johnson's 6'7", McGowan's 6'4", and 6'4 is the tallest kid on the court for Miamisburg. So definitely the height advantage for the Elks. Cups is gonna try to free himself up. Has to pick up his dribble, packs out the Kays. Hayes backs to Cup. He's gonna get a screen by Johnson. Pick it to Kenny, back to Johnson. Nice cut off a of pick and roll, but he can't finish. And Miamisburg's gonna bring the ball up. This is where the Vikings need to capitalize. And he's gonna be gonna fouled. for a foul, that's gonna be number one on Dang. If that's who they call it on. Cheater, yep. Centerville's gonna take out Kenny and, John, and uh, Hayes. Rolf and House back in for Centerville. McGowan get the inbound pass. Kopic still on the bench with two fouls for Miamisburg. Board one out on a three. Back to Cooper. Cooper Cooper's gonna, gonna drive, drive baseline. I got, uh, I had a opportunity for a three there. Centerville's doing a good job of closing out on their men. And a nice drive Turn and take. Shot. What a shot there by Copsey. Cuts it to a one point game. Let's see if the Elks can retaliate here and maintain and their lead. Cup's going to hold it for the final shot here with five seconds left in the quarter. He's Cup's going to pull up from three no and good. misses it to the left. And now there's still time, and Miami's going to pull up, and it's no good. And that's going to be it for the first quarter here as the Elks are up by one. And that was a back and forth game. Both teams, they, they have good looks, good opportunities. It's just Miami's very had a little bit more sloppiness on their offensive side, so maybe they could have had the lead going into the half if it weren't for that. But Five turnovers for Miamisburg in that quarter to Centerville's one. Centerville was one for four from behind the arcs. Miamisburg 0 for two. Centerville one for, 0 for two from the line. Miamisburg two for three. Cubs leading score with eight points for both teams. So Centerville going to Cups early and often in that first quarter. See if Miamisburg can talk about it and settle down and cut that out the second quarter. 
And like I said, yeah, just if you want to stop and beat the Elks, you first need to stop Cups as he has eight of the 11 points. And we got about 10 seconds before we resume action here. Centerville is going to start off the second quarter with possession as Rolf inbounds the ball. All right. Let's see if Centerville can keep up what they were doing the first half and just keep that offense revolved around cups. Three on the way. Up and no good by Rolf. Bodies are hitting the floor, and it looks like a foul is going to be called against Miamisburg. That's going to be. It's going to be on number three. Watching along the sidelines, line. Cups is one of the most animated coaches in Chiwalk. You'll see him. He'll in three plays. He'll be from standing up down to both knees, and then on one and. Cups in the corner, going to try to free himself up. A good defense by Miamisburg and almost stolen away. Rolf drives, kicks it out. House going to drive in. House down low to Rolf. Or the other way around. Holst. Rolf with the bucket. Foul was on Copsy. And Rolf connects on that and one and now cashes in. It makes it a four point lead for the Elks here. Rolls first points of the game. Now the ball's gonna be brought up by Otteson. And almost losing control of the ball and he does. That's a costly turnover. That's the sixth turnover of the game for the Vikings. Miami's very, I mean, Centerville is just having some pesky defense and really giving these Vikings a hard time. Cubs gets the inbound right in front of us. Cup's going to drive, kicks it out, corner, baseline drive, down low to Hayes, and what defense there by Otterson. After Otterson making the turnover, he comes up clutch and makes that defensive stop to give his team back the ball. Cops one. down low to Boardwine. Boardwine back to McGowan. Lucky no there wasn't call. a charge call there. Offensive rebound, and it's stolen away by Hayes. Hayes Kick it over, Cups. Cups. He's going to drive baseline. Or in from the arc, and it's good. Cups is on the, He now has eight points. And hey, we were getting early. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. So now he has eight points, eight out of 16. And there's another turnover by Miamisburg. And they cannot have that if they want to stay in this ballgame. And Miamisburg is going to take a big swap out and then get some of their bench involved. And by doing so, they have a very big height disadvantage. Cups is going to bring the ball up once again. Back to Rolf. Cups drives. Kick Kicks out. it out to Rolf. Dang, going to drive in. And they're going to call a block on Boardwine. That's going to be Miamisburg six. So one more, and the Elks are in the bonus. With six minutes left, and if you're Miamisburg, you don't want to get in the bonus with six minutes with a lot of time before half. Rolf, or House gives it over to Rolf. Rolf splashes it from, or House. Miamisburg's going to call a quick timeout. House is going to splash it from the corner, and that's going to give Elks a nine-point lead. Miamisburg really needs to get things handled and under control if they want to stay in it. It's going to be a 30-second timeout for Miamisburg. And let's just see if they're going over to see if they can, can contain this Elks offense. As the Elks do a really good job of passing the ball around and getting passing the rock around and getting op good open shots for teammates. It's not really a one-person-centered offense. It's really re revolved around everyone, as you can tell by this first half. All right, we're going to resume back to action. Miamisburg's going to inbound the ball from their own baseline. I mean, op their opposite baseline. Cooper's going to pass the ball into 
Otterson. Otterson. Otterson's going to bring the ball up for the Vikings and watch behind him. Has good defense by Hayes and Otterson had no idea and they're going to pass it out to Rolf and Rolf's going to have an easy layup and good transition offense for there. The Elks as Rolf hustled down to court and what good defense by Hayes by coming up and sneaking behind Otterson to get the steal. And that's another turnover for this Miamisburg offense and now they have numbers. Cooper. Cooper back out. To nice Topic drive. Drives through the paint. And he's going to get fouled. Well, I know one thing that this offense is going to get talked, or talked about and shoot out for in the locker room is the amount of turnovers they've had in this first half. That's what's really given the Elks this lead is costly turnovers and wasted possessions. As Coppock knocks down the first one to trim the lead down to 10. Coppock knocks down two for two. Let's see if the Elks can maintain their run here. Cups is gonna Cups is gonna turn the ball over. And it's gonna go back to Miamisburg. And let's see if Miamisburg can could start a run here going into the half and maybe cut down on this lead or maybe even tie it up. Coppock's gonna get the ball from the inbound. It's gonna be brought up by Boardwine. Boardwine's being guarded by House. Ball kicked out to Coppock out in the corner. Coppock looking, gives it across. And another court. turnover. And not a foul called on Hayes, and there it is. And that's just a bad pass if you're for Coppock. You're all the way in the corner, and you're trying to make almost a half, like, across the court pass there. And that's just that's just bad basketball. Fouls on Copsy. You got yourself a stop on the defensive side, and then you go down and turn the ball over yourself. That's just not good basketball. And Hayes misses his first free throw. Hits it off the back rim. And he's gonna try to Hayes knock down his first. Hayes comes in 52% from behind the arc, or from the free throw line. Hayes knocks down the second to give the Elks another 10 point lead. Now the Elks are playing some good. Full court defense. But Miami's Burgess to get out of it. Hayes has, very, has been really good on the defensive side and has already had two steals in like the past three minutes. And he affects that shot there. Now it's going to be brought up by Rolf. It's going to be tipped away by Cooper and it's going to maintain with Centerville. As Miamisburg is going to check back in with Logan to give them a little bit more height. And take out number 30, 32, out Myers. Myers. Is that Josh Myers' brother? It's either his younger brother or his cousin. Josh Myers just declared for the draft. Go up and the Bengals take him? No. <laughs> the Bengals, they, did, they need they need to protect Burrow at if all they costs. Do not, if they do not take that kid from Oregon, I think there's going to be a write down in Cincinnati in the front office. Um, Miamisburg is going to be commit another foul, and that's going to put Centerville on the bonus. And that's going to be on number, that's going to be on Kopik, his third. So he's going to be sitting out for, like, for the rest of the half as he's at down with three fouls. Four and a half minutes, he's going to be on the bench. Coppic. At least probably for the rest of this half. And now Kiefer is going to be up at the line. And probably most of the third. Kiefer's going to knock down the first. Give the Elks an 11 point lead. And yep, Miamisburg's taking out Kopik and replacing him with McCohen. And now Kiefer is going to try to knock down and go two for two from the line to give the Elks a 12 point lead. And he does. Let's just see if the Vikings can come surmount of something here and try to cut down this lead to below double digits as Cooper brings the ball up for the Vikings. And he's going to kick it out to Boardwine. Boardwine back to Logan. Over to Logan to Copsy. Copsy driving in, and he walked. Or double dribble. And the ball's going to go back to Centerville, and there's another turnover. How six, many turnovers do they have Six so in the quarter for Miamisburg, 11 in the game. Yeah. Compared to Centerville's three in the game. That's going to be mostly one thing that Miamisburg's going to have to control. As a nice Cups pass. It's going to go one. the line for the and one. Gabe Cups now has 10 points, and he's having himself a half. As he's going to go to the line and try to convert for this and one and give this Elks 
a 15-point lead, and Miami's is going to take a timeout. They desperately need one as they're falling behind very fast and very quickly. As there's about four minutes left here in this second, and that's going to be a 30-second timeout for Miamisburg. And I guarantee you the coach down there is not too happy with his offense as they've, like you said, committed 11 turnovers overall. And if you're wanting to win basketball games, that's not how you do it is with turnovers. Cups is coming off a 19-point game against Woodward the Wednesday night. He had 19. He was 8 for 10 shooting, 1 for 2 from behind the arc, and 2 for free throw on the free throw line. Season high, he has 24 points. That was two weeks ago against Pickerington Central. And Cups connects and on the and one, and that gives Centerville a 15 point lead. And Centerville traps him in the corner and almost makes the ball turn away. And now Miamisburg, they have numbers, but Centerville with their great defense comes back and stops the run. And now Miamisburg has another. Cups it. Cups is driving in and he's gonna, nah, I'm surprised that wasn't. might have maybe tipped that one off the backboard, but Rolf there for the putback for the Vi or for the Elks. Somewhat As almost looked like goaltending there, but the refs didn't call it. And now Otterson's going to bring the ball up for Miamisburg, and he's going to be guarded by Cups. Kicks out to Boardwine, and Boardwine is just going to throw the ball away. And, man, this Miamisburg offense is just in disarray as they can't seem to get around this central defense. And as, as it stands right now, Miamisburg has more turnovers than points in this game. Wow. 13 turnovers to 12 points. Yeah, that is, that's not a stat you want to hear if you're a Miamisburg fan. Centerville House is going to, is going to kick it back. It's going to be a travel, and Miami's is going to get the ball back. So down by 17, you really do not want Centerville to get a 20-plus lead. You want to at least try to keep them within, below that, to at least yeah. give yourself a chance. Miami's are going to get a couple of shots, get this a little bit more closer to halftime. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Cooper's going to kick it out to Logan, back to Otterson. Otterson's going to drive, kick out back to Cooper. And it's just Miamisburg, they need to really stop with these bounce passes. It's really is what is being intercepted by Centerville. And that is, it's what it's been. Miamisburg's bounce passes have been intercepted as Rolf rips, that, or House rips down that now one. Now Centerville has numbers and an easy layup for Hayes as Miamisburg's transition defense was horrible. <laughs> A 19-point lead now for the Elks as we're approaching two minutes left in the... Copsey's going to have himself a drive, and now he's going to get double-teamed, kick out to Logan. Logan's going to pull up, and he's going to make his shot from, from the elbow. Now House has the ball. He's going to kick it out. A nice drive. Taken away by Miamisburg, and Miamisburg's going to get the ball back. He's going to kick it up to Cooper up court. They have numbers. He's gonna drive, and another turnover. And House is gonna settle for a second, guarded by Copsey. He's gonna pull up, and he's gonna sink it from almost the free throw line. That's just a silky smooth shot for House as he has eight in the game. A minute 45 left in the first half, and Centerville starting to mount a huge lead. Otterson's gonna try to score here for his Vikings. He's gonna kick it out to Cooper, and that's gonna and be an offensive call. foul. Man, and that's going to go down as another turnover. Ten in the quarter. They're about to have more turnovers in this quarter than they do all points. Foul was on Evan Otterson. And now the Elks are going to do a big substitution. They're going to bring in number 21. I'm going to have Kenny. to pull out the JV roster because Centerville is going to put them in to start the second half <laughs> with a 20-point lead. Johnson's back into the game, and he's up at the top of the key. He's going to kick it out to Cups. Cups is going to look around for his teammates. He drives in, a pull-up jumper, and it's good oh. for Cups. And now Cups Centerville has 13 in the game. Centerville now has over a 20-point lead as they are up 35-14. to 14. Now Cops is getting... It's just this defense by Centerville is swarming the Vikings, and they don't know what to do about it. Cooper with the ball. Back to Copsey, back to Otterson. Otterson had an open shot. Back to Logan for three, and his three-pointer is no good. Rebounded by Cups. Cups is going to make his way down court, and it seems like he's going to find, he's going to dish it off to his teammate. It's going to be blocked, I think. 
And the ball's going to go back to the Vikings as Cooper brings the ball up, and he's going to kick it out to Otterson. Otterson's going to drive. He's it back to Cooper. Cooper's going to push, and he's going to get a nice little... Oh, and the ball's going to be pushed up to court to House. House is going to drive, and he's going to get himself an easy layup. As Centerville gets those points right back. And Cooper's going to bring the ball up for the Vikings. I'm not going to say that this game is by far over. The last time these two met three weeks ago in Miamisburg won on the last second three, Centerville was up 37 to 16 at the half. Well, it might be. <laughs> and it's 37 to 16 now, getting ready to go to the half. It might be a tale of two tapes then. Miamisburg closed the game out and then they That's scored 42 in he's gonna, the second. He's gonna have him and no, and no buzzer. Either. Denied at the rim. And that's going to be the end of the first half, and Centerville's going to have a 21-point lead. And you, you already, like you said, 37 to 16, just like the last game. Let's see if Miamisburg can go into that locker room, and their head coach really needs to get his team under control and control those turnovers. And let's see if they can mount the comeback like they did three weeks ago. Centerville leading 37 to 16 at the half in our MVCC game of the week. All right, just about ready to get back from halftime here in Centerville High School. Centerville with a commanding 21-point lead here to start the second half in our MVCC Varsity Game of the Week. But you, like but, you said, like three weeks ago, don't let this score fool you. The Elks had a 37-16 point lead going to the half three weeks ago when they were playing at Miamisburg, and Miamisburg mounted the comeback and knocked down a buzzer beater three to knock off the Elks. So, you know, anything can happen. This game is far from over. Yeah. Miamisburg starts this game off. In that second half, Miamisburg outscored the Elks 36 to 12. And that one is swatted out of bounds by Trey Johnson. Miamisburg is going to retain possession. Ball is going to be passed in to uh, Copsey. Copsey is going to pass out to Otterson, back out to Copsey. Cops is going to go to Kopik. Kopik's still playing, and he's got three fouls. He's going to go to the line. This is where discipline's going to have to come in. Kopik, the junior, he's going to have to. That's going to be Emmanuel Dink's third foul as well. Kopik, his first free throw attempt is good. And let's see if Miamisburg can mount that comeback like they did. Now the lead is down to 20. It goes two for two from the line. And here comes Cubs bringing the ball up and leading the Elks down the court. He's going to kick it out to House. House is going to get a, House is going to not take the screen. He's going to pull up and he's going to miss. Rebound. See that, that's a break the I'm Vikings going. need. Missed shot. You got to come back though in transition. Wow. Pops, and you got to make it. And they're going to call the offensive charge. If that's Kopik, that is his fourth. It is Kopik. And that's a big blow for Miamisburg. And they're gonna bring in they're gonna bring Cooper in to take his place. I don't really know if that was that didn't really look like a real offensive foul though to me. I mean I, I my my field of view is a little obstructed, but it didn't seem like he really pushed off. Oh Vikings head coach Tim Freeze is livid over on the sidelines. He's he he's begging. I mean, and arguing with the refs that the calls are not being called on both ends of the court. Unlike the NBA, they don't have the challenge option. And man, and what a block Dang there. was met at the rim by Logan. Logan, and Logan won that battle. And now miamisbury has got a little spark of life, and Otterson's coming the ball down, and let's see if they can get they some come points. down off that big block. He's going to be trapped in the corner. He's going to kick it out, and that's going to be a backcourt violation if they even touch the ball. All right. No, they were saying it was tipped. And it's going to go back to Miamisburg. Oh, wow. I think that's why Logan didn't try to run it down as quickly because he, the ref signaled tip immediately. Cooper's so, going to pass the ball into Copsey. Saving right play there for Miamisburg. Lucky that Rolf had got a fingertip on it. Cooper's going to kick it out to Otterson. Otterson back to Copsey. They tried a backdoor screen with Cooper, but that didn't work. And now McGowan's going to launch a three. Can't hit it. Dang with the rebound. Cups again, he's gonna kick it up to Rolf, Rolf to House, House for three, his three-pointer, no good. 
Rebounded by Copsey. Copsey's going to kick it out to Cooper. Cooper's going to kick it out to McCohen. McCohen's going to drive. Cups is going to take the charge. And he's going to go to the line for and the nope. and They're one. Call a block. That was good ball movement there by Miamisburg as they got the ball up the court real quick and they brought in, they got McCohen the ball real fast and that's how they got the down foul to a 17 lead. Let's see if McCohen can convert here. And he does. And now it's a 16 point game. And Cups going really fast. Centerville coming up with, a, up with an up tempo offense. Cups guarded by Copsey. Two minutes into this quarter, Miamisburg has held Centerville scoreless so far. Otterson guarding Dang. Back to Rolf. Cups for three. His three pointer, no good. Rebounded by McCohen. What McCohen. McCohen ripping the board, and he's going to be fouled. McCohen had Johnson and House all over him, and he still came away with the ball, and he's going to get fouled. Miamisburg is really coming out of the half strong and coming out quick. They're going to call the foul on Johnson. They're going to bring as in you're Hayes. See Hayes Johnson. checks in. Copsey's going to inbound the ball for the Vikings. And they, they need if to hurry up. McCohen. If Miamisburg can connect on a three here, that'll be huge. Cuts this lead. Miamisburg trying to work it. Cooper's going to give the ball to Otterson. Otterson's going to kick all the way across court to Copsey. Copsey's going to scan the floor looking for someone. He's got Logan. Logan to Cooper. Back to Logan. Logan. Ah, in and out. Rebounded by House. House is going to move the ball up court. He's got numbers. Rolls kicks Cups. it back out to Cups. Back good out. defense by Cooper. House is going to pull it from three. And his three-pointer is oh. good. House bangs in. That's, that gives House 13 points in the game. Cooper is going to kick it to Otterson. I mean, that's Otterson. Logan has the ball. Logan scanning the floor for another teammate. Logan He's trying to find someone to pass it to. Gonna kick it out. To Finally Otterson's gives it to Otterson. Three Logan's in the corner for Logan. Three corner. Bang. Bang. Back and four three pointers, and Hayes gonna have the ball from Cups. Back to Cups. Cups gonna have the top key. Back to House, and House is gonna try to retaliate. He does. Oh. Another three. Splash it right in Cooper's face. House has 16 in the game now for the Elks. House is heating up. And now Cooper bringing the ball up for the Vikings here. Cooper. Getting surrounded by these Elks. Now Alderson scanning the floor for a teammate to pass to. That 7 nothing run Miamisburg started the quarter on has been erased. That's back to a 19 point lead for Centerville. The ball's tipped away. Cooper's right going to launch Cooper. a three. And, his and three he answers is good. back with one of his own. We back got a three back point back showdown back right now. Threes. And where's the NBA at? Three point contest. And, and it's going to go back to Miamisburg. I'm telling you, this game. It's swaying back and forth. House is keeping the Elks in it. Without House, Elks would be hurting right now. And Kip, Cubs goes for the steal, and saves it and back. to Dang over to the corner. If that was a clean pass, House was hitting another three. And Shot House up and no good, and but he rebounded. gets the loose ball. I, I, Otterson comes up with it, and he's got Cups guarding him, and he's going to miss the layup. A little bit too hard off the glass. Cups is going to pass it up to House. House is going to find Hayes in the corner. Hayes is going to pull it from three, and he's going to seek oh. it. And that's going to give Elks a 19-point lead. And now Miamisburg is starting right off where they were in the half. Otterson had himself a chance there, but blew the layup and gave the Elks momentum. That's a five-point swing there for Centerville. A missed layup from Miamisburg, and a three made the other on the opposing end. Otterson. Gonna try to find himself. He's gonna do a teardrop. He's gonna be fouled Buddy's and he's gonna go to the line. And it looks like Miamisburg's gonna bring Breadwine into the game and Centerville's gonna bring Kenny and Heifer into the no, game. No, they're gonna call it an offensive foul on Otterson. Oh wow, that's gonna be Otterson's second. Team second. All right, now it's Centerville's gonna try to bolster their lead. Cops no. bring up the court. Not as fast tempo as they were as they once were. Hayes is gonna kick out to Kiefer. Cups. Cups is gonna pull up and he's gonna get the no, he's not gonna get the soft roll off the rim, and that's gonna be off on Miami's. It's gonna be off Kiefer. Oh wow, it looked like it was off Breadwine's fingers, but it's gonna go to Miamisburg. Cooper the inbound. Guarded by Kenny. Ooh, and Kenny almost got his ankles broken I think there. that was some acting by Kenny. That one goes off of Miami's, or off of Centerville. 
stays with the Vikings. Long inboard, inbound pass to Boardwine. Boardwine's Boardwine trying the ball. to get some separation. Ooh, Cooper somehow kept that ball yeah, in bounds. I think Kenny just took that one off the face. And that ball's gonna, wow. I'm surprised that did not stay with Centerville. That was clearly off Logan's hands. But it looks like the refs are gonna meet and they're gonna keep it with Miamisburg. Miamisburg's getting breaks here, but they, they're turning they the ball capitalize. over themselves. The Cooper is going to be guarded by Hayes, bringing the ball up. Cooper a little doing bit a good of shifty job. defender there by Cooper. Kick out, board line three up. No Can't good. get it to fall. McGowan with the rebound, and he's going to go to the line for two. Oh, what a start to the second half. I mean, back and forth, three-point action, and now... Centerville seemed like they were trying to take it away, but Miamisburg's still trying to mount that comeback. Centerville still has a 19-point lead, and now McCone at the line. Knocks, no, does not knock down the first hit, rimmed in and out. And let's see if he can get one point out of here. And McCone misses both, and man, that, that really hurts. That's the overcorrection, missed it wide, the, or missed it long the first time and missed it short that time. Well, Cups, gonna give it to Rolf. Rolf driving, Rolf. Splits two defenders, but can't finish at the rim. Cooper is gonna bring the ball up for Miamisburg here. Guarded by Hayes. Two minutes left in the game. And that ball almost stolen away and it's gonna stay with Miamisburg. And Miamisburg. Miamisburg is going to bring in Myers and Kopik. Logan's going to inbound the ball for the Vikings. He's going to get Kopik back, back in, the game. in there. He's playing with four fouls. Let's see how conservative he is. Cooper's going to do most of the ball handling. Kopik's going to get the ball. He's going to drive in. He's going to pull up, and he will sink it. Now a 17-point lead, and now Hayes driving, and I think it's going to be an offensive foul. And that's a good call as Kopik had his feet set, and that was a little scary. If Kopik's feet were moving, that would have been his fifth and final foul to the game. And now Logan going to inbound the ball here for the Vikings, and the Vikings could get something going here if they can score. They're going to inbound it to Kopik. Kopik's going to pass it to Boardwine, and Boardwine's going to bring the ball up. I think at some point Miamisburg has to go to an offensive setup where they're going to have both Kopik and McGowan on the court try to have some sort of height down low. Cooper trying to get some separation. Cooper guarded heavily by Hayes. Kicks it over to Logan. And Kopik, that, that was tipped. a lazy pass. Now Boardwine being doubled in the corner. Out to Kopik, Kopik. now Cooper. Cooper, see, you got to take those threes when you're down like this. Cooper looking for a foul there, but didn't get it. Now Hayes, he's got numbers. He's going to kick it out to Kiefer. Drive in the baseline and in just, the easy layup. That's too easy. You got to have help defense there. And now Miamisburg's back to a 19-point game. And Cooper's going to bring the ball up, guarded heavily by. He's got to hurry up and get across half court. And she does. And Cooper's going to nice pass off, but Logan couldn't maintain it. And now Centerville's got numbers. Cups bringing the ball up. Cups floater, no good. Rebounded by Rolf, no good. Rebounded by Myers. Boardwine up court fast, lost it. Boardwine's looking a little shaken up after that play. Might have banged kneecaps, but he's up and moving. Centerville's gonna bring House back in for, uh, for Kenny. Boardwine picks up his third foul. They're going to send Logan to the bench as he came up limping. Cooper's going to come off the floor and be replaced with Fries. That's the coach's kid. Well, you got Coach Cup's son out there, and now Miamisburg's coach's son out there. 
Baseline shot is up and good at the buzzer for House. And you can give House 18 points in the game. House had a really good half. He, he knocked down multiple threes and then ends the half there and gives Miami or and gives Centerville a 21 point lead. Now we got about a minute till we resume action for the fourth. I mean, Amiesburg has done a better job of not turning the ball over as much. It's just they couldn't cash off uh, off opportunities when the Elks would miss shots or turn the ball over themselves. And that's the reason why they're still down 21. During the break, you got Centerville cheerleaders down there getting their home crowd into the game. about our resume action here. And I believe it's gonna be Miamisburg ball to start off. And Miamisburg's gonna start with Bordwine out there, Topic, McCohen, Fries, and Cooper. And Centerville's gonna have Hayes, Kiefer, House, Cups, and Rolf. And it's gonna be Centerville's possession here. And Rolf's gonna inbound the ball. Cups will bring it up and lead his offense out here as Cups has had himself a pretty good game as well alongside House. Cups is going to drive, and that's going to be a hard physical foul. Cups is going to head him to the line for two. It's going to be it's going to be Cooper's second, team's fourth. Gabe's Cups is going to try to cash in two points here. And one thing about Cup's free throw shooting is right when he gets the ball, he does not hesitate to shoot it at the foul line. He doesn't take time to relax or anything. Once he gets it, he just automatically kind of goes with it, which just works for him. As Oh, I know it. That ball rims out, but it's rebounded. And, a, and one by Kiefer as he's going to go to the line. And that's going to give Centerville a 24-point lead. Kiefer has himself eight points today. Foul is the third one on Cooper. And Kiefer has a hard eight points in this game. Free throws up and good. It's going to give Citadel a 25 point lead. Bordwine's going to inbound the ball. He's going to give it to Kopik. Kopik's going to give it up to Fries. Fries is going to stop, go back to Kopik. And that ball's going to be stolen away. No, it's not. Bordwine has the ball. He's going to take it and miss. Rebound by Cups. Fighting for the ball on the floor. They're going to call a foul. And they're going to call Kiefer for the foul. And wow. A lot of contact. That'll be Kiefer's second. The ball's going to stay with Miamisburg, even though it looked like there's a lot of contact and everything going around. No, really. I don't. Uh, the only reason I think a foul wasn't called is nobody really had possession of the ball. Cooper is going to have possession here. He's going to drive. He's going to take, and it's going to be too hard. And that's going to stay with Miamisburg. And that's really just how Miamisburg's yeah, night's yeah. gone. When they get inside on the paint, Logan's they just push it too hard up the off the glass. Fries. Miamisburg's going to pass the ball into Logan. Logan's going to give it to McCannon. McCannon's going to give it to Copsey. Copsey's going to make a spin move, split the fenders, and he's going to make the tough and get the nice roll. And that's going to cut the lead down to 23. Cups holding the ball now, looking for a teammate. He gives it to Kiefer. Kiefer gives it to House. House for three. Bang! Oh. And that's going to give the Elks that 27 point lead. Or 26. House got 21 in the game. House is a lethal three-point shooter. Cooper is going to try. He's getting swarmed by Elks, and he's going to just throw it up, and it's going to be right there for Logan, and Logan's going to find McCann. Or McGowan. Rolf's going to give the ball back to Cups. Cups is going to drive. He's going to kick it back out to Rolf. Back to Hayes, and that ball is tipped, and it's going to stay with no. 
It looked like it was tipped, but it's going to... It looked like it, the way the trajectory went out of bounds, and House was sitting there saying it was tipped too, but not going to go. It's going to go back to Miamisburg. Logan's going to inbound the ball. He's going to give it to Cooper. Cooper's going to be guarded by, by House. Cooper's going to make himself way all the way down to the baseline. Ball is going to be out of bounds. It's going to go back to Centerville. I mean, this, was just, this has just been a real sloppy game for the Vikings, and I, and I can believe their coach is going to be very frustrated. Pops is going to give it to Hayes. And Dang is back in the game. Dang is going to give it to House. Wait for House to pull up and shoot. He's feeling it tonight. Dang's going to give it to Rolf. Back to Hayes. Hayes to House. House going to drive. Baseline. He's going to kick it out to Rolf. Ralph, the pump fake. Oh, Rolf oh, slips. Step goodness. back three. That would have been a nice three if he would have made that. And rebounded Coppic by. comes away with a strong, or McGowan, sorry. And he's going to find Copsy. And Copsy's going to take it. And, and it's going to be an offensive foul. They're going to call a charge. And, and Freeze is livid on the sideline. I mean, he just, his team can't catch a break. They're turning the ball over, getting offensive charge fouls called. There's, hey, there's nothing really they can do. That, that was, last possession, I'm surprised they didn't call House for a travel as it looked like he drug his foot or slipped when he went to break his cut. Dang's going to give the ball to Cups. Cups has himself a nice open lane, and he's going to be fouled. Cups is going to go back to the line. And this has just been a really good overall game for the Elks. It's a lot of a lot of teammates have gotten in on action and have really scored. And Coach Cups has to be pretty proud of his team tonight, defensive-wise especially, causing a lot of turnovers with their pesky defense. And Gabe Cups is going to knock down his first free throw. And Cups is going to knock down the second and give the Elks a 26-point lead. Cups ties house with 16. Cooper is going to be guarded by Dang. And Dang is playing and sticking onto him like glue. Going to give it out to Copsy. Copsy is going to get a screen from Logan. Copsy gives it to McCowan. Copic's going to drive, and, and he's... that might be a foul on Cop. Nope, it's going. They didn't call it. They didn't call a charge this time. So Copic is going to foul is on number 12. Go to Tom the House, his first team seventh. Both teams in the bonus, but 26-point lead for Centerville. It's not really going to matter for Miamisburg in this one. Copic makes it. Both teams are in the bonus now, both having seven team fouls with five minutes left in the fourth. And Coppock cashes in on his second free throw attempt and it's gonna cut the lead down to 24. Like you said, I don't know if there's really much in. House, and he's feeling it, he oh. pulled up. Lethal from behind the arc is number 12, Tom House has 24 points in the game. House is really reminding me of like Tyler Hero or Duncan Robinson tonight from the Miami Heat. And he's going to take it out and get an and one foul. And Boardwine, or excuse me, Copsy's going to go to the line and try to cash in on an and one. But talk about House tonight. He, he has been lethal from the three point line. And yeah, keep it up, and my center will get a couple stops. He could have more points in the game than Miamisburg. House has 24, Miamisburg has 38. Timeout's going to be called from Miamisburg, and it's going to be a 30-second timeout, a full timeout, excuse me. And Centerville tonight has just executed well, played well. Defense has been great, knocking down threes, free throws, getting being aggressive. Just what else could you ask for from your team? They play every single game like this, so I would expect to come out with a win. And if you're from Miamisburg, you just you just have to take this tough loss. Understand that you didn't play up to your expectations, and come back next week and try to get a win. Miamisburg's got two losses, and this will be their third loss in a row. By the time they get to the end of this one, they lost to Wayne last Friday on the 15th, 43 to 39. Then they lost to Wayne Tuesday, 59 to 39. Centerville loss here. We won't know the final. Their game against Fairmont has already been postponed for next Friday. Fairmont not being allowed to play until the 30th when they can resume basketball activities. 
So Miamisburg's next, next game will be Wednesday, February 3rd against Northmont at Miamisburg High School. And then they've still got three hard games after that. They'll have to play Beaver Creek, who they only beat by eight earlier House in the year. calling for three again. Bang! Oh, oh. my goodness. <laughs> now, if you're playing NBA Jam right now, House, every time he touches the ball, that ball is on fire. What was that, NBA Jam? Every time you keep making shots. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah. Copic drive, jump through the paint. But that's going to be a big game. Saturday the 6th, Miami's work plays Alter. You know, if I'm Centerville here, I would take out all my starters and not risk an injury. I mean, you clearly have the win. And get your bench in there, players, so you don't get to see the floor as much as the starters. Or just get them more experience in case of a big time game and foul trouble. I mean, there's four minutes left, so no need for your starters to be out there. And now Cooper slips but maintains possession. He's going to kick it out to Logan. Logan's going to drive. He's going to find Kopik from the three, and he's going to miss very bad. Looking like Paul George again, like I said. And he's going to get blocked. And House, oh, he's going to. Turn gonna... around, three, up it. Oh, oh. almost, man. That would have been that's a heat check. And now up Miami the other way, numbers. Cooper. And that's going to be. And he's going to be charged for the offensive foul. And Cooper, that'll be four. I have seen a lot of. But looking at the rest of Centerville's schedule, they've got a tough stretch of games coming up. They play. They play. They still have games against Beaver Creek, Northmont, St. Vincent, St. Mary uh, next Saturday. Then they play Trotwood. They still have a game against ISA. Os Andrews Osborne, and then they still got Wayne and finish the season at Lakewood St. Edward all the way up in Cleveland. Tough stretch of games there to, for the Elks to finish out the season. And now it seems like Coach Cups has taken out most of their, or he at least took out House, and House deserves a standing ovation from his performance tonight. And Cups just kind of slow the game down, just dribble a ball out and Try to incorporate the guys and Rolf in the corner. He's going to drive back out the Cups. Cups is going to pull Cups up. just inside the arc. Cups is going to sink it. I think he has 18 now in the game for Cups. Cups and House both. Just between the two of them, they're beating the Vikings by themselves. <laughs> and Cooper, he's going to drive, and that ball's going to be out of bounds. Block. It's going to, or no, I think a foul is called. Cooper's going to head to the line. With about three minutes left Jason in the fourth Hayes. quarter. That's Hayes' third foul. <laughs> Cooper's had to play a really tough, aggressive game tonight after being swarmed by defense. You got to give him props for staying in this game, being aggressive, and keep playing competitive, even though your team's down by. 17. Sammy Freeze and Dunaway come in for the Vikings. Trey Johnson's also going to come into the game. Rolf's going to head out for him. Now Cups is going to have all of his bench in and give his team a standing ovation and go up the court with a win, a well-deserved win. And we're going to kick it up. We're going to see Max Nauer kick it back out to Reese Clark Ryan with the ball Reese right Clark. now. And now Kenny is going to pass it. He's going to find number one and one. Shot is up and good Hafner's. by Quinn Hafner. And see, these players were huge JV stars the last two years for when we started covering this graduating class. Pull up shot is good there for Otter Logan. or Logan. Now we're over to Clark. Or no, nice pass. That was Kenny. And Johnson almost threw down the jam, and that would have that would have lifted the house off this building, the roof off this building. He just couldn't come up with it. That was a great pass by Kenny, though. Now Johnson's going to head to the line for two.
Now, if Centerville still had Mo here, I think he would have gotten that slam down. Johnson's first one is up and hits the back of the iron. Copsey comes back into the game. Going to come in for Kopik. 2.13 left. Miamisburg with, or Centerville with a 27 point lead. There's about two minutes left in this fourth quarter. And it seems like Miamisburg is just gonna put in a little bit of their bench and give them experience. As Fries has the ball right now, he's gonna kick it out to Copsey. Copsey's gonna scan the floor. He's gonna Logan's find Logan. Three, three is up, no good. And that's been Miamisburg's struggle tonight is the three-point shots. Fries having the ball right now, kicks it out to Dunway. Logan's gonna make the shot. Logan has 11 in the game for Miamisburg. And he's gonna have, Clark's gonna give the ball to Velasco. Kenny. Gonna drive, kick out. Clark's three is up and rims out. Rebounded by Myers. Myers is gonna give it to Copsey. Copsey is gonna give it to Logan up court. Logan's gonna cross over. Logan's gonna give it back to Fries. Fries is gonna drive. He's gonna take a shot and he's gonna connect. Shot there by Sammy Freeze. And you see coach, Miami Sports coach Tim Freeze still coaching this game as Dunaway is going to be called for a foul. And it looks like Coach Freeze is going to get his young team and young bench into the game. And now you see the bench clearing out for Miami's work. You're going to see Copsey, Davis, and Boardwine comes back into the game. And Reese Clark is at the line. He misses his first shot. Let's see if you can connect on this. They give the Elks a 14 or 24 point lead. Ball's going to be brought up by Boardwine. Boardwine's guarded by Kenny. Boardwine gets the ball over half court. Screened by Dunway. Boardwine's gonna drive, he's gonna take Board the- Boardwine, nice drive to the basket off the glass there. Now the ball's gonna be brought up by Hafner. Hafner's gonna, Hafner's gonna kick out to the corner, find Kenny, Kenny's gonna shoot and miss. Rebounded by Copsey. Copsey's gonna bring the ball up to the Vikings and there's about 30 seconds left. So I wonder if they'll just dribble the ball out or try to get some points here. Dunway's gonna miss, and now Centerville's just gonna dribble the ball out, and that's gonna conclude today's game. Or never mind. Oh, three up. Hafner's no good there by Dunway's gonna get the rebound, kick Hafner. it out. Eight Davis. seconds left. Davis is gonna pick out the Copsey, Copsey. And a turnover there. Away. And now Centerville's gonna come out the win. And that one is gonna do it for our MVCC Varsity Game of the Week. Centerville wins 71 to 49 in dominating fashion. Our player of the game is gonna be senior Tom House. 24 points in the game for Jared Bergstrom, Lucas Smith, and the rest of the Miami Valley Communications crew. We'll see you next time.